Guys, it's finally time. Time to talk about the cinematic blockbuster event of the summer. We've been waiting for it, craving it. And now, after what feels like years of delays, pushbacks, and silence, we finally have the film that's going to put butts back in the seats of the movie theaters. Oh, not, not that one. I haven't seen that one yet. I'm talking about the other cinematic blockbuster event of the summer. Please don't click away. Hello and welcome to The Martini Shot. My name is Brandon and today I'm going to be reviewing the 2022 animated film, The Bob's Burgers Movie. But before I do that, I'd like to get my ducks in a row with this delicious summer cocktail I've named the Lucky Duck. Perhaps one of the most defining traits of Bob's Burgers is its original songs that are written for each and every episode. These songs tend to be catchy earworms, despite the voice cast not being the best singers. A testament to both the writing and the composition. The film is no different, and perhaps my favorite of the soundtrack is a song called Lucky Ducks, sung by a bunch of carnies who are peeved about working a job that pays little and runs the possibility of getting them killed. It's a funny little song named after the carnival game where you try to pick a duck out of a group with the highest number or a certain color to win a prize. It takes me back to childhood memories of boardwalks and amusement parks, so I figured a nice summer cocktail based on the game would be great for the film and the season. This is a gin cocktail that we are going to flavor with some summer elements like peach and lemon. Then we're going to dye it blue and top it off with some champagne until it's bubbling like the water under the wharf. Let's get into it. So let's go ahead and start with our gin. We are going to do one and a half ounces. Next, we are going to do half an ounce of peach schnapps, not to be confused with that peach brandy I like to use. This one's a little bit more clear and it's not really going to affect the color as much, which is kind of what I'm looking for. And then next, we are going to do half an ounce of limoncello. And next we are going to continue to heighten that lemon flavor with some actual lemon juice. We're only gonna do about half an ounce for this. All right, now we're just gonna do a splash of blue curacao, not really for flavor purposes, just for the color. And there's no real exact measurement for this. You can probably get away with either a bar spoon or a fourth of an ounce, just until it gets to the color that looks best for you. So let's go ahead and add ice and shake to chill. And next we are going to strain that into a coupe glass. And don't worry about not filling your glass to the top. That's where our next ingredient comes into, the champagne. So we are going to top this off and make it nice and bubbly. And there's a really cool champagne bottle opening technique called sabering. Uh, where you actually use the other side of a knife to kind of slice the bottle off. And it's really cool, makes champagne shoot out. I've never done it before. And either when I do try it, I'll try to get it on camera. And one or two things is gonna happen. Either it's gonna make a very cool shot or I am going to injure my hand greatly. Either way, it's good content. Mazel. <laughs> so now we are going to top just a little bit of champagne to get it back up. And of course, it looks good, but it's not really lucky duck territory yet. So that's why I have gone ahead and ordered a couple of little of these guys just to kind of bring the drink home. We'll just put them right on top. And there we go. Now you have your lucky duck. All right, let's go ahead and give it a taste test. Yeah, I mean, this pretty much just reminds me of summer. It's very fruity, very light, very bubbly. The champagne really kind of changes the texture of it. You get a lot more bubbles in it. It's very airy, very light. Uh, the peach really does kind of come through pretty strong. Uh, if you aren't a huge fan of peach, you could probably even dial this back to maybe a fourth of an ounce. I think you'll be safe. Uh, it really kind of pairs really well alongside not only the limoncello, but also the lemon juice itself, uh, but doesn't completely get lost in it, which is pretty nice. And of course, if you're going to be drinking in the summer, you got to go with gin. You can also replace it with vodka, but I think just because of the floral juniper notes of gin, it will pair really well alongside these other flavors you're going to put in there. So very easy to drink, very light, very bubbly, great for poolside or beachside. Now that we have our drink, 
let's jump straight into the review of the Bob's Burgers movie. Bob's Burgers is a Fox adult animated series that debuted in 2011 and has been running strong since, with its 12th season finishing up earlier this year. The series centers around the misadventures of the Belcher family, who own a small burger joint that struggles to make ends meet repeatedly. Husband and wife Bob and Linda and their three children, Tina, Jean, and Luis, are constantly thrown into wacky situations in their small beachfront town filled with many colorful characters. I've been watching the show for years now, consistently finding it refreshing compared to many other adult animated shows on the airwaves. The show finds ways to be funny without being overly crass or reference heavy. And while it won't be everyone's cup of tea, I've enjoyed every which way the show has made mundane life seem like fun. Every now and then an adult animated series gets the opportunity to go big and produce a feature length film. The Simpsons have done it, South Park has done it, Family Guy has surprisingly not pulled the trigger on that, and now Bob's Burgers is throwing its apron into the ring. So what does that mean? Well, it means more shadows, noticeably fluid animation, and an expensive orchestra backing the soundtrack. The film is more or less what I expected it to be, a 90 minute long episode with slightly higher production value. As a fan of the show, I'm relatively okay with this, but it does make me wish the movie went more all in on the fact that it can make a much bigger story this time around. The story is a mixture of a mission to save the family business, a murder mystery, and a musical, which is certainly on brand. It has a few twists and turns here and there, nothing too crazy, but the writing definitely helps to carry the film. Like I said, the comedy won't be for everyone, but I found it to be quirky, though not overtly. There's a lot of one-liners that land and a lot that don't. And I can't say this film will exactly have you busting your gut, but rather sensibly chuckling. The best part of this film for me was definitely the original songs incorporated into some pretty fun dance numbers. The aforementioned Lucky Ducks is probably my favorite, though the opening track Sunny Side Up Summer is also a lot of fun and gives each of the main characters an opportunity to establish their conflicts early on. There's another song that the villain sings near the end that is just okay, being broken up a little bit too much by talking. I do wish the film would have gone into a full-blown musical approach, as the original songs are definitely what makes the series stand out for me. I think it could have helped the movie feel more grand rather than just another episode. That's kind of my main gripe with this film, is that it doesn't really shift from the status quo enough to leave much of an impact on me. There's some nice emotional moments thrown in here and there, but the characters more or less go about themselves with their usual character traits. I was pleasantly surprised to see Luis get a good amount of character development here, being the only one to really go through any kind of arc. I just wish there was more to justify this being a movie. Most of the plot points have actually already been used more or less in the show itself, and you can tell there was definitely some padding because some scenes go on for way too long. All in all, it's an easy watch I wouldn't really mind coming back to. If you haven't seen this show, I can't say for sure if this will win you over, but much of the humor and style runs parallel to the series itself, so hey, you might find yourself a new show to binge. For my rating, I'm giving this film three burgers out of five. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of The Martini Shot. If you saw the Bob's Burgers movie, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. And if you like what you saw here and would like to see more, don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me across all social media channels. You can find those links down in the description. And if you're interested in more movie reviews and movie-themed cocktails, be sure to check out my website, martinishot.blog. Until next time, thank you again for watching. I will see you in the next one. Live deliciously, but please remember to drink responsibly.